بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وبارك على الأشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا عما بعد رأيكم الله جميعا وبارك الله فيكم Alhamdulillah, we have, we have uh, we began last week uh, Kitab al-Zakah, mentioned the Maqaddimah, yeah, the introduction to Zakah. Uh, however, what the intent was, or what the, my thought process was initially, was that we go straight on to the, the Zakah to Saima, in the, the Zakah regarding the, um, the cattle, and thereafter the zakat of the ikhraj min al-ard or na'am or the ma kharaj min al-ard so the zakat regarding the crops however um, after some thinking and, and going through the, the chapters I believe that it would be better if we begin and we skip those two chapters and we go straight to zakat al-athman so zakat regarding the precious metals the reason for that is that first and foremost the purpose of these lessons, yani, these lessons in fiqh, is so that we can understand some of the ahkam and some of the rulings and then implement them. Now, I'm to understand some of the rulings and implement them. And generally speaking, when it comes to the rulings of cattle or owning cattle or uh, owning crops, then that's not going to apply to many people living in Cheatham Hill. Or Hume, Mossite. Naam. And so, rather, these other chapters are more uh, more suitable or yani, more relative to our condition and our state. And Allah Ta'ala knows best. And so, Ibn Qudama goes on to mention this chapter here, which is Bab Zakatul Afman. <coughs> so, the chapter pertaining to the zakah of the afman, yeah, and the zakah of the precious metals. And he mentions, وَهِيَ نَوْعَانِ الذهب والفضة. الذهب والفضة. So there are two types, ذهب and فضة. And so, Even though there are many different types of metals, the metals that zakah is an obligation upon is the dhahab and the fiddha. We mentioned previously what is an obligation for us to pay, to pay the zakah on? What which commodities? Which are the commodities that is an obligation to pay the zakah on? Yeah, the only one generally. Gold, silver, cattle, crops. Trade of merchandise. Naam. Anything outside of that, then it's not an obligation to pay zakat on it. Right? Because the asal is adam zakat. Naam. So the asal, the foundation is that zakat is not an obligation. Unless it falls into one of those categories. So, when we're mentioning now the metals, then... Other metals, for example, hadid, yani iron, or lead, and other than that, then these metals are not an obligation to pay zakat upon. So a person may may have large amount of metals with in their possession, but it's not it's not an obligation for them to pay zakat upon it unless it is gold or silver. No, unless it's gold or silver. However, say if a person has yeah, any steel or iron and they use the steel and iron yeah, and they sell it. So they sell it to other people. Is it an obligation to pay the zakat upon? Yes. Why? Because it falls into the category of merchandise. No, it falls into the category of merchandise. It does not fall into the category of them having to pay zakat upon the metals, well, it's not from the metals that zakat is an obligation upon. 
However, it falls into the merchandise, i.e. the merchandise that you have, that you use for trade. Naam. Thereafter, Ibn Khudama goes on to mention, وَلَا شَيْءٍ فِيهَا حَتَّى تَبْلُغْ مِئَتَيْ دِرْحَمْ فَيَجِبْ فِيهَا خَمْسَةَ الدَّرَاهِمْ and so in relation to the fiddler, yeah, in relation to the to the to the silver, then it's not an obligation to pay it. I have to pay this account upon it until it reaches two hundred dirham. Two hundred dirham. I have two hundred dirhams worth, and then this is when it becomes obligation to pay the zakah. Yeah, two hundred worth. And when it reaches two hundred worth, then it's upon the individual to pay five dirahim. Five dirahim upon it. And so this in uh I looked it up today and in common term or this common term in terms of pounds sterling. It's just over four hundred pounds. Now four hundred pounds sterling, four hundred and thirty pounds sterling as of today. Now, I'm, and I say as of today, why? Because of course the price fluctuates. Now, I mean, its value fluctu fluctuates. Yeah, on a daily basis. And I thought no, seven hundred, seven hundred pounds. Apologies. And as for the gold. Then it is not zakai not played upon it until it reaches Ishreen and Mithqal. And in this regard, they play this one Mithqal. And so it reaches Ishreen and Mithqal. And the amount that that reaches now is around £4,000 sterling as of today. So just over four thousand pounds sterling as of today, and thereafter, Ibn Khadam goes on to mention, "Fin kana fihi ma ghish, fala zaka fihi ma, hatta yamluk qadr al dhahab al fidda nisaba." And so. If now there is some form of mix within that metal, okay? so it's not just that the metal is purely gold or purely silver, then the person does not pay the zakat upon it until the gold or the silver from that metal reaches the amount of the nisab. Does that make sense? So many of the metals, many, many of the, the, the metals you may find now Gold is mixed with something else. Silver is mixed with something else. Now, even though they say, they might say this is a silver chain, for example. Or this is a gold bracelet. However, it's not purely gold or purely silver. So, just because it has the name of gold or silver, this is not sufficient. Rather, it depends upon how much the actual gold is within that mixed metal. Or how much the silver is within... The mixed metal within the mixed mixed metal, and then until it reaches that amount, then uh, it's not it's not something that zakah has to be paid upon. Naam. And so, that's in relation to the to the metal that has something mixed within it. Thereafter, Ibn Qudam goes to mention. That there's no zakah upon the jewelry which is permissible to wear or to be used or for the jewelry which is yani loaned. So for the jewelry which is loaned. And this is yani a mas'ala, a particular issue that is discussed in relation to the jewellery. 
And that if a person has jewellery, like and they're wearing jewellery, a woman, for example, wears gold jewellery, it's upon her to pay zakat upon that. And so, as what we understand, what was mentioned here is that the zakat is not paid upon that particular yani, metal. Even though it's gold, even though it's silver. Even though it's gold, even though it's silver, it's not paid upon because it is used yeah, and, it's, and it's worn. Ibn Khadam goes on to mention further, وَيُبَاحْلِ النِّسَاءِ كُلْ مَا جَرَتْ عَالَتَهِنْ بِلَبْسِهْ مِنْ ذَهَبْ وَالْفِضَّةِ And so, it's permissible or that which the, the woman wears and is regarded as being an ada. So that which she, she wears by way of uh, habit. Now, habitually wears in terms of the uh, gold and the silver, then it's permissible and it's not upon her to pay the zakat upon that. What is meant here as well, Barakallah Fikum, by the zakat or what is or the ada rather, is what is regarded as being a normal piece of jewelry. Naam. And something which is regarded as being a normal piece of jewelry, something that a woman can would wear, generally speaking. So, what we understand from that is that it's not something where, for example, it's not uh, not regarded as being a normal piece of jewelry and allowed to add those best. So, earrings or uh, bracelets and the likes of that, then it's this is this is something she does not pay as a cat upon. Then they go on to mention Wayabahil Rijal Min al Fidda al Khatim Wahidya to safe Wa min toka wunahrihima. And so as for the men, then it's permissible for the man to wear his silver. To wear silver. So to wear, for example, a ring of silver. Or Mafalan, when it comes to the sword, that he uh, he may have some jewelry that is upon the sword, uh, his weapon. And so, what we understand from this first and foremost, as is mentioned, that it's impermissible for the man to wear gold. Likewise, along with that, it's impermissible for the man to wear the jewelry which is not regarded as being from the ada of the men. The jewelry which is not regarded as being from the jewelry of the men. So, for example, the necklaces and the likes of that, or the bracelets, the the the, ring, the wrist bracelets, are something which is ascribed to the women and from the jewelry of the women. And so, it's not something that the men wear. It doesn't matter if it's silver or gold. Naam. And in relation to that. When we talk about yani, zakah, then for the men, the zakah, if the man wear, if the man is wearing something which is not regarded as being from the uh, the libas of the men, or the jewelry of the men, then it cannot be now said that this is exempt from the zakah. Now, nah, this is not something which is exempt from the zakah. Allah Ta'ala knows best. And the Quran goes to mention further, so as for the metals that are used يعني, for storage, that are stored away, نعم, the likes of them, all the metals which are muharram, the metals which are haram, فَفِيهِ zakah. So if the metals are stored, so for example, people have particular metals and they keep them in storage as yani, a commodity. Naam. So they keep it and they save it just as people save their wealth, their money. So they put some gold aside or some or some silver aside and they hold on to it just as they would hold on to cash. Then zakat is an obligation upon that. Likewise as well, 
if the metal is regarded as being muharram, if the metal in of itself is haram, naam, if the metal itself is haram, then upon that zakah or zakah is an obligation to be paid upon that as well. What is what is an example of that which is haram from the metal? Your gold utensils, naam. Gold utensils, for example. If a person has gold utensils, and a person, of course, in Muharram to eat and drink from these gold utensils. Naam. Toy, what else? Men wearing jewellery of the women. Necklaces, bracelets. Naam. What else? Gold for men. Now, so each and every one of these, if they are a person possesses these, whilst it's haram for them to have or haram for them to wear, it's upon them to pay the zakat upon it. It's upon them to pay the zakat upon it, if that makes sense. And so this is what we understand from this particular chapter and Allah Ta'ala knows best and Alhamdulillah is quite straightforward. Thereafter, we have the next chapter which is Bab Hukum al Dain. The chapter pertain, pertaining to the Dain. So the chapter pertaining to the debt. What is done with the debt? And so, Ibn Khudam begins by mention by mentioning Man Kana Lahu Dain Ala Mali Omal Yumkin Khalasuhu Kal Majhud and Ladi Lahu Bayina O Maksu Baladi Yatamakal min Akdihi Falay Zakatuhu Ida Kabaduhu Lima Mada. And so the first thing mentioned is the Dain, I the debt itself. And the debt, the one that has the debt is of different types. Now, and the one that has the debt is of different types. So Ibn Khudama mentions the first type. Now, I'm the first type who has a, who has a debt. Yani, the one that has a debt owed to him. So this is the first, the first type in terms of the one that has a debt owed to him. He is the one that is owed money by someone that is affluent or has money. And they, has, they have the ability to pay it back. So they owe money by someone that has the ability to pay it back. Or, there's money that is disputed. Uh, it's, a, it's a disputed amount. However, he has clear proofs that he's owed this money. Now, so for example... If now a person has done a, a dealing, a business dealing with someone, and they say, Mephalan, from the profits of this of this transaction, I will take twenty percent, and Fulan takes this percent, Fulan takes that percent. But it, it's stated I have I will take twenty percent, and it's written down in the contract. Everyone signed that contract. Now, and then when the profit comes now. The person that they're dealing with is like, I don't, I don't know what he said. I don't know why he's saying 10 or 8%. And he, reg- and, he, and he refuses to pay him, my fellow. However, he has what? What does he have with him? Did he mention? The contract. So he has clear proof that that, that was the agreement. So these all fall into that same category. So the one that is his old money by someone that is, has the, the wealth to pay it back, the one that's old money or disputed amount of wealth, where he, there is a, an agreement, now nah, there's a particular agreement in place, or he has proof that this money is owed to him, as well as the one that who has had money taken from him by force or stolen from him. However, he has the ability to retrieve it. So these are all examples on the one. Every single one of these, upon him is to pay the zakah, once he retrieves that money. So upon him to pay the zakat, once he retrieves, 
that money. And we understand from this, so it could be the ma the ma which is maqsub, or the ma which is masruq as well. There's a difference between the two. As long as it's maqsub, I when the money is taken, it's taken from your person. And I've taken directly from you. I sent you with force as well. Yani, what we call these days mugging. If someone's mugged, you took the wealth from him. Well, masruq is where the money was, or this wealth was taken without your knowledge. So here, here where Ibn Qudama is referring to the maqsub, within that as well, is the ruling of the masruq. Yeah, that which is stolen without your knowledge. So, for example, someone came into your home and took something from your wealth. Now, someone came into the home and took something from the wealth. Took some money, took some gold, nothing. Like now, and so thus, if now the person has the ability to retrieve it and is ghalib al dhan, yeah, and it's, it's, it's understood for the most part, that the person is going to be able to retrieve that money, then upon them is to pay the zakah. Upon them is to pay the zakah. What we mean by this, I when they retrieve it, the book that mentions once they retrieve that money. So what we mean by this is that if, for example, within that wealth, they have reached a nisab, so they've reached that amount, naam, which is an obligation for them, for them to pay the zakah. However, they don't have that wealth on them, of course, because it's owed to them. It's a dame, it's a debt. It's a debt or it's been stolen or the likes of that. However, once the time comes, so let's say, for example, it's Ramadan. Once that time comes for them to pay that zakah, naam, they don't have it. Once they retrieve it, let's say they retrieve it in yani, Dhul Hijjah. Then they pay the zakah from the money that was owed from Ramadan. Does that make sense? Make sense? So the one year has passed and that one year elapsed from in Ramadan, for example. Naam. However, they pay it in Dhul Hijjah. Why? Because they don't have it at that time. So they pay it once they retrieve it. And this is in the scenario, this is the first category, where it's understood that they will be able to retrieve that wealth. It's understood that this is this is an example of a person that will be able to retrieve that wealth. And so, within that, upon them is to pay the zakah. Now, thereafter, Abdul Qadam goes to mention I, the second category. And who is the muta'adhir? The one that has legislated excuse. And... An example of that is the Dane of the Muflis. So the person, you are owed money. However, the one that needs to pay you, I right, so the, the, the debtor, it's the one that has the debt, he's Muflis, he's bankrupt. And so, Aslan, is, it cannot be, and it cannot be uh, understood or expected that that money is going to be paid back. Because he's in a state of bankruptcy. He doesn't have money for himself, let alone to pay money back. Naam. So, for example, you are owed money by the one that is muflis. Or, the same example, where there's a dispute about owed money. However, in this case, what's the difference going to be? There's no proof. For example, there's no contract. There's no proof for this. Or the money has been taken and it's stolen and then it's gone. It's disappeared. And it's not expected that it will be found. Then in this scenario, فَلَا زَكَاءَ فِي In this scenario, there's no zakah to be paid upon it. So this is the second category. I wear this person. It's not upon it to pay the zakah. Why? Because 
the one that he has a debt with is Muflis. Now, to put it in real terms, let's say, for example, a person, he he's taken a loan. Now, he's taken a loan from another individual. The individual, the debtor, who has taken the loan, he has normal cash flow, but he just needs to take a loan in order to pay something immediately. But he has normal cash flow. Now, the I so the one that's giving him the loan, the creditor, does he is it upon him to pay his account? Shall I repeat the question? Shall I repeat the question? Tell you. So is we'll make sure we mention again the creditor and the debtor. The creditor is who? The one who gives the loan. Debtor takes the loan. Tell you. So now the debtor, he has money. He has cash flow coming in. However, he has to make a big payment which isn't in line with his cash flow. Okay? So, in that scenario, he needs to take a loan to make that big payment. But he has regular cash flow coming into his account. And so he's, he makes a payment plan with the creditor. Now, so the question is now, does the, is it upon the creditor to pay his account? Now, yes. Uh, he's reached the conditions, let's say. He has to pay Zaka. Why does he have to pay Zaka? He's expected he's going to get the money back because it's, it's, it's understood there's regular cash flow. It's just that due to that one circumstance, he had to take a loan. So, then you have another individual. So, he has regular cash flow, but he's making a big payment. And. Um, yeah, he has to make, a, he has to make a, a big payment, so he takes the loan. Now, however, maybe shortly after he takes the loan, he loses that cash flow. Let's say if he's a if he's a tajir, his business goes, yani, his, his business fails. So, or if he's a if he's a muwaddaf, if he's a normal clerk worker, he loses his job. So, what is done in this circumstance? Is, it, is the one, is the creditor upon the creditor to pay the cut? No, because the person essentially is bankrupt. No, when we say bankrupt, we understand bankrupt to mean that the person, what they owe is more than that they, what they have or what they're expected to have. What they owe, yani shar'an. What they owe is more than what they're expected to have or what they actually have. I we don't know, when we say bank, we don't mean that the person went to the to the court, filed for bankruptcy. It doesn't matter. That, that's that's not important. It's important that the person what they owe is different from what they have. I what they owe is more than what they have. Now I'm then the person essentially is bankrupt in that regard. So likewise as well as mentioned is the the uh, the person he believes his old money, now and it's disputed. However. It's disputed about this amount that is owed. But he has no proof to say that he owes it. So if there's no proof, then Ghaib al in generally speaking in a general sense, he's not going to be able to dispute it in any court and receive anything. So because he has no proof that it's owed to him, then generally speaking, he's not going to receive that money. So it cannot now be said that he's going to be, he has to pay his account upon it. Even if it's owed to him, in reality. Nah, because there's nothing to indicate that it's owed to him. Make sense? And the final is the final example within this category is the one where the money is taken. However, no? The money, for example, it got spent, yeah, like that. So the money, it was taken, it was stolen, but it's gone. I either the money, the one that took the money, no one has any idea who took it, or the one that took the money has spent that money and take it, and and there's no there's no way for him to get it back. Now, as for the one that took it, then that's that's a completely different masala altogether. Now, I don't know that is haram. However, 
we're talking about the one that that owned that who, who possessed that wealth, and now he doesn't have it. If he possessed that wealth, he doesn't have it, but he's able to retrieve it. Yes, pay zakah. If he's possessed that wealth and now it's taken from him, and there's no there's no uh, indication that he's going to be able to receive it back, then in that scenario, it's not upon him to pay the zakah. Naam, wadah. Likewise, as well. There's a few of the ikhwa in this scenario. There's the hukum of sadaq, hukum of deen. I right, so the hukum of the dowry. So where brother, where the, the man, the brothers, they owe money to the bride. Naam, they owe money to the bride. It takes the same ruling as the debt. Naam, so if, for example, they have an agreement that he's going to pay the rest of the mahar, naam, the rest of the, the dowry at a particular point in time. And he has the wealth to, in order to do that. Then what happens? What is what happens? Who's the pay zakah? Now the woman. She, she gets the money. <laughs> she pays the zakah. Naam. She pays the zakah. If, however, now nah, I'm same scenario, let's say, they've agreed and then he lost his job. It's not upon her to pay zakah. Now nah, it's not upon her to pay zakah on that wealth. Why? Because it's not expected that he's going to receive that she's going to receive that wealth anytime soon. Now, nah. and so the the one that has the debt. This uh, the, or the one that, that owes the bride the dowry, then this takes the same ruling as the dane. It takes the same ruling as the dane, the general debt, and Allah Ta'ala knows best. Thereafter, Ibn Qudama mentions, وَمَنْ كَانَ عَلَيْهِ دَيْنِ يَسْتَغْرِقُ النِّصَابِ ذِي مَعْهُ أَوْ يَنْقُصُهُ فَلَا زَكَاتَ فِي and so whoever has a debt that will cause him to fall below the nisab, i.e. that amount, then it's not upon him to pay the zakah. So for example, if we said the nisab was 700 and the person has in his bank account 800. However, he owes someone 400. There's no, it's not upon him to pay the zakah. Naam, why? Because in reality, that's not his money. That's old money. So the money's been given to him for a particular benefit, manfa'ah. However, it cannot be regarded as being his own wealth which he would pay zakat upon. If now we said, for example, that the zakat, now the amount is 700, this person this person has £2,000 in his account. And he owes 1000 Is the upon his pay zakah? Yes? Why? He's reached a level and even with that amount, he hasn't fallen below. Naam. He hasn't fallen below. He still remains above. And so, as long as he remains above that level, he pays the zakah upon what then? What's not in regard to being part of the debt. So in this regard, if, he's, if he owes 1,000 of that 2,000 and he pays the zakah upon, the 1,000 that's remaining. Naam. And so this is what we understand from the ruling of this. And this is the, this is the general discussion about that. We'll conclude here, inshallah. Allah Ta'ala A'lam, inshallah, next, next week. The clocks go back next week. So, so next week, the lessons will be earlier, inshallah Ta'ala. And then, uh, we'll try to cover some, some more than usual, or than today. Barakallahu feekum, jazakum ala khaira. Wa sallallahu wa barak, ala nabiyyina Muhammad, 
wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wasallam no It's no longer a debt now. Yeah, so it's your money. So he has to pay his account on it. It's it's the the moment the moment that he forgives it, he's forgiven the debt. Yeah. So now that no longer is your there's no longer his money. It's just, it's also as if he's given you that money now. Okay. Now, so if now say it's a different scenario, the person as you put it, he's generous. He gives you a thousand pounds. If he, let me know where he is first. <laughs> And secondly, he's giving you that money. So now that is your, that's your wealth, so you have, it's a cash to be paid upon it. Now, just as now, same thing, if uh, he, you owed him that money, but now he's forgiven that, it's the exact same in you know, the transaction, if you like. So if now, for example, uh, you've... you've uh, You've come across that time, and then he's given it to you at that point. At that the, at that point, that's when it begins. Okay. Now, nah, because the, before that, it wasn't your wealth. It wasn't your wealth. As soon as he's forgiven it, then it's now becomes your wealth, and it as it's added into that. Now, Allah, Zakkum Akhir, Barak Allah Fikum, Sallallahu Wa Barak Al Nabi Muhammad, Al Ali Yusuf Yusallam, Wa Akhud Da'wana. الحمد لله رب العالمين